Hi and welcome to another episode of Mr. Ford's Guide to the A-plus Certification Exam, How to Be a Computer Technician. In this episode, we take a look at the computer components. Hey and welcome back. Uh, this video I want to take a look at the components that you would find on a motherboard. Now historically this always showed up on the A plus exam. So you would have a picture with maybe an arrow pointing at something or a circle. Basically you had to identify parts of a motherboard. Now we are going to go into more detail on some of these components as we go through the course. The whole idea behind what I'm doing here is we're creating a layer of knowledge. And so we're going to give you a fundamental base of information that you can build off of throughout your study. So let's begin by taking a look at one of the images I'm going to use for our lesson. And this is a stock image of a newer type motherboard. Now I'm going to use images to help show you the different components. My suggestion on this is to actually get your hand or hands on a motherboard. And I would suggest a broken motherboard or an old motherboard, something that you don't need to work because you don't want to go poking around in your desktop computer that you might be using right now. So an older motherboard works just fine. So let's start off by taking a look at our first little doohickey, which would be a PCI Express 16. The 16 tells us how many lanes are available for communication. So this would be 16 in this case. And we're going to take a look at a different PCI Express in just a second. The lanes are full duplex. What that means is we can send and receive information at the same time. This is a major, major step forward than some really, really old technology where you could only send information or receive information. You couldn't do both at the same time. And I mean like really old, old, old technology. So the full duplex is pretty cool. The PCI Express 16 is also or has become the de facto standard for video cards. And when we start talking about video, we're going to find out that video really has been very demanding on computer technology. It's really pushed kind of the envelope of whatever we currently have because, you know, gamers want really cool graphics. You know, you want to see the blood splatter and, you know, the expressions of people. Um, then, of course, we have Minecraft, which <laughs> don't worry about that one. But we have this video stuff that we really, really, really want to have great video, crisp video. And now, even now, PCI Express 16 is not enough. Sometimes we have to put more than one video card working together in unison to create some amazing, amazing graphics. Moving on to the next PCI Express um, opening, we have the PCI Express 1. So this is a little smaller, and yes, we can put little devices in there as well. Now going back to the parent of PCI Express, we're looking now at the PCI slot. Now the PCI slot at the time when it came out was absolutely groundbreaking. It really revolutionized how we connected to how we connected components to the motherboard because this allowed us to really get plug and play and was really a major step forward in my opinion on motherboard technology computer technology now we see the back or rear panel connectors and we'll take a look at those individually we're going to take a look at where the mouse plugs in keyboard audio cables, monitors, things like that. And that'll be another graphic we'll take a look at. This one is a CPU socket. A CPU socket is where we put the CPU, the central processing unit, whether it be AMD or Intel. In this case, it's an LGA 1155. And the reason why I know that is because it says so on the motherboard itself. And we will take a look at CPUs separately and learn what they do and the types of CPUs as well as the connection types that we need to have them to work right. Next one, we see an ATX 12 volt power. When we take a look at the power um, supply from the previous videos, 
we saw that there were cables hanging off, little dongles hanging off the power supply, which we could plug in to different devices. So for example, we could plug them into the motherboard itself to power the motherboard. We could plug them into the CPU. We could plug them into video cards. It allowed us to plug into different things to get us some power. So in this case, this one is an ATX 12 volt power supply. And moving further down, we have the RAM slots. This is where you would put your RAM sticks in your memory. And this one is a DDR3 type of connection. DDR does not stand for Advanced Stands for Revolution. It stands for something else, which we'll get into when we talk about RAM in its own lesson. Moving further down, we see another power connection. This would be your main power connection to power the motherboard itself. And again, that's coming off of the power supply. Then over here, we have a chipset. Actually, what we're seeing here is a heatsink. Underneath the heatsink is the chipset. Now, in older motherboards, we had a north bridge and south bridge, and we'll see that image in a few seconds. But in this case, we have a chipset. It's kind of a combination underneath that heatsink. And by the way, when you see a heatsink, whether it's on your um, CPU or your chipset or a video card, you can pretty much guarantee that there's a processor underneath it because processors generate tremendous amount of heat and we need to pull that heat off of the processor so bad things don't happen. Moving a little bit further down, we have the BIOS and we'll talk about BIOS in its own lesson. Over a little bit more to the side, we have the SATA connections. This is a replacement for the old IDE connections. And you would connect, let's say, hard drives to these connections, uh, CD-ROMs, DVD-ROMs, other uh, devices within the computer. You could connect there for serial connection. Over here, we have a clear CMOS jumper. In um, Again, we'll talk about this in other, other lessons, but you can configure things in your BIOS. And so let's say that you put a password on your BIOS and you can't remember what the password is, you can't bypass it or you mess something else up in your BIOS, you can go to that um, clear CMOS jumper and manually set it so that it clears whatever you did and that way you can go back to previous settings. Now, one of the cool things is that in some of your more expensive motherboards, because they figure people are gonna tweak it and play with it and do things with it, they have buttons, really nicely labeled buttons to uh, clear and reset your, your information, but again, this is not one of those gaming motherboards. It's just a generic kind of a newer motherboard. Over here are your front panel connectors. This is where you would plug in, for example, maybe the headphone jack in the front of the computer or maybe your power button or LED lights. So, so this is where you would connect the front of the case to the motherboard. Now, little word of caution, if you do wind up putting together your own computer, it can be a little bit of a pain right here, and this is where you would have to have the manual for your motherboard to know what's going on. And usually you also may have a manual or a diagram within the case to tell you, hey, this thing's for this, this thing's for this, and they might be labeled, actually should be labeled to some degree. You really can't break anything, so if you put it on the wrong thing, you just switch it and try it again. Over here is the system clock battery or CMOS battery. Yes, it's a watch battery. These things can go bad. It takes a couple years for that to happen. Usually your computer's having other issues before you have to replace that battery. Here is an older motherboard. You can definitely see the difference. We don't have any PCI Express slots. And we take a look at something called a CNR. This is a riser expansion slot. We can connect sound cards or modems to that. And we really don't see them in more of the modern motherboards. They've been kind of phased out. Here are our PCI slots. Over here is our AGP slot. This was the older version of how we connected video cards. So the AGP was what we used before PCI Express came out to connect video cards. The video cards used to, before the AGP, you could have a video card plug into your PCI, but, well, I guess at the time it was kind of cool and neat because it was better than the older connections, but they soon realized that PCI was not fast enough, and so they modified it and made a special video card, an AGP card, and you'd only have one of these on a motherboard as opposed to the PCI Express 16 where you can have more than one. 
Here we're seeing a fan, and under this fan we have a heatsink, and under the heatsink we have the CPU. Over here we have the power supply plug-in, and this is where you would plug in the main big thing for the power to power the motherboard. Over here we have another heatsink, and underneath this heatsink is the north bridge. And in this series of videos, not this lesson, but in other lessons in this series, We'll talk about chipsets, Northbridge, Southbridge, all that fun stuff. Just know right now that that is the heatsink over the Northbridge, which means that it must be a processor underneath. Over here are memory slots. Going down, we have the floppy disk controller. Hey, kids, back in my day, we had floppy disks. About that big. And we used to have to plug them in, and this is what you would connect an IDE cable to connect to, and so that would be your connection to the floppy drive. A little further down, you had your hard drive connections and your optical drive connections. Now, you didn't always have to do it to an optical drive. You might have done it to two hard drives or whatever, but this was the IDE controller, the connection to those devices. And if you remember earlier in this video, I showed you the SATA connections. SATAs are a lot easier, in my opinion, to plug in. Over here we have a smaller chip. Now in this case it's not that powerful so we don't really have to have it heat synced, but it is the South Bridge. Here is that CMOS battery that we saw on the newer motherboard. Over here are some more front panel connectors. Again, we've already seen those in a newer motherboard. Now let's take a look at the rear panel connect uh, connectors. This is what you're going to see on the back of the computer. This is where you're plugging in your mouse, your keyboard, your audio cables, uh, USB cables. Now, you can plug things into the front, but this is on the back, okay? And let's take a look first at this greenish purplish connection. This is a dual connection on a newer motherboard where you can plug in either a keyboard or a mouse. And really, nowadays, most people are going USB to plug these in, which is why you see this kind of uh, multicolored dual purpose connection, this PS2 connection. On the older motherboards, you had two separate type of connections. You had one for the mouse and one for the keyboard. Moving over, we see the Sony Philips digital interface. This is a special type of connection for audio. And this is what you're going to get for surround sound, 5.1 or greater. So this is something that you're gonna find on more of the upper level motherboards for really good surround sound. Moving over are USB connectors and you've got tons of USB connectors. You'll see them on the back of the computer, on the front of the computer. And we have a new USB standard coming out. This is not it. This is an older USB standard that we're seeing here. Over here we have an RJ45 LAN port or an ethernet port. This is where you plug in that big phone cable, the RJ45. Not the RJ11, which is a smaller cable, like for your phone, but it's like a big telephone cable. That's where you'd plug that in for your network connections. And again, even this is starting to go the way of the Dodo Bird as wireless is uh, taking over. Uh, for example, um, the school I teach at, students have these laptops and they don't have this connector because they don't need it. It's all wireless nowadays. So I'm wondering how long before we see these gone from the back of computers. We have seen the disappearance of the RJ11, the modem connectors, as most people have gone to high-speed internet. Over here, we have the audio cluster. The main stereo speaker is green, and yes, you do need to know these for the a exam. So main stereo speaker is green, line-in connector is blue, microphone connector is pink, the center subwoofer is orange. Over here, we have a older back panel connector. We're looking here at a female parallel port and female male. Female has the, um, well, male has the pin sticking out and females have the receptors for the pin. I think you could figure out why we call them male and female. So this one is a female parallel port. And if you saw the other one, it was gone. The female parallel port, parallel ports were used primarily for printers. Um, again, now we're using USB for printers or wireless for printers. And so the parallel port has pretty much gone bye-bye. Down here, we see the data bus DB connector. This one happens to be a male connector. Over here is also a DB serial connector. This is a female connector, but more um, appropriately, it's called a VGA connector. This is where you would plug in the monitor. And again, 
This is kind of disappearing from the face of computers as we're seeing a higher definition connection from computers, but you can still find these on some computers. All right, that was a lot to take in, and I, I realized that, and this is kind of an overview of the components of the motherboard. And yes, you do need to know these, and you do need to identify them on the exam. And as we go through these lessons, we will dive into some of these connections and what they mean in more detail. So our next video, we're going to get even further into the computer deep end by taking a look at chipsets.